Hello Bond fans! So here we are once again with another episode of James Bond Jr. The third episode, in fact, and the first episode to feature an original villain. Now, if you recall a few reviews ago, I looked at episode two and it was diabolically shit. I'm yet to discover any reason why anyone who watched this show as a kid would look back on it with fond nostalgic memories. But I did commit myself to at least three episodes of this show before I either continued with it or completely gave up on it, so let's see how this episode pans out. Episode 3, The Chameleon. So this episode opens, well, quite mysteriously to be honest. An unknown man approaches a soldier at an army base and electrocutes him, drags his body away, and... Uh... If you thought an invisible car was too sci-fi for James Bond, then I have no idea what you're going to make of this. Yeah, this is something right out of X-Men. A character morphs his face into that of another character's. Boy, I can't wait to see them try and make this logical. Anyway, the face-morphing character gets into the base and electrocutes Ernest Borgnine here, takes his identity, and then asks for a four-star general's dress uniform. He gets the uniform, but his face malfunctions or something, and so he flees, and... Well, that's our pre-title sequence. Don't be completely bowled over with surprise, but I actually quite like this opening. It's mysterious and intriguing and actually makes me want to carry on watching, which is what a good pre-title sequence should do. Please understand that when I say this is mysterious and intriguing, I'm talking from the perspective of this being a kid's cartoon show. I'm not saying this compares to the Skyfall pre-title sequence or anything like that, but for what it is, I'd say it's pretty good. After after the title song, we head to good old Warfield and see that Bond Jr., IQ, and the gang are off for a field trip to Washington, D.C. I don't think that's the fashion they're wearing in the States, IQ. IQ? This long underwear you gave me is driving me crazy. What's with Trevor? Well, he's been afraid of flying ever since we had that bumpy trip to Vienna. So, so I sewed a parachute into his long underwear. It's almost as if they're making fun of people who wear long underwear. In an odd little bit, it turns out that Tracy's passport has expired and she can't go on the trip. Is there a, a, like some kind of quota as to how many characters we can have actually going abroad in any one episode? Mitchell heads off with all the five students apparently going on this trip. Seriously, how does this school keep running? They only seem to have about half a dozen students in attendance. Anyway, we get to Washington, D.C., which seems to comprise of the Washington Monument and eight buildings, and we see our villain, otherwise known as the Chameleon, from earlier. It turns out he has the ability to change his appearance due to micro-molders under the skin, which transmogify and fricando to create a whoopily doo wham bang squallop effect, which means he can change his appearance. <coughs> completely sound science there, then. A couple of troops turn up and the Chameleon learns that a lieutenant is flying into Washington, D.C. to alert the Pentagon of the Chameleon's scheme. Which is kind of weird. Why don't they just phone the general and warn him? Why do they have to send someone over? Meanwhile, Bond Jr. and the gang arrive in D.C. Mitchell, like any good guardian abroad with students, leaves the kids completely alone while he goes to look for transport. Haven't you got a limo? Yeah, but I left it in the garage with my Rolls and Mercedes. Why does everyone suddenly look happy when that one walks past? If people did that to me in the street, I'd be pretty freaked out. Oh, isn't that awful? You mean the way that man knocked your briefcase down? No, I mean women serving in the military when it's clearly a man's job. I think here the show is trying to make the point that sexism is not an appealing quality and only a snobbish twat would be sexist against a woman. But if I may read as a choice uh, passage from Casino Royale, where are we? Ah, uh, 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 yes, here we are. <clears throat> and then there was this pest of a girl, he sighed. Women were for recreation. On a job, they got in the way and fogged things up with sex and hurt feelings and all the emotional baggage they carried around. One had to look out for them and take care of them. Snobbish twat indeed. 
Bond Jr. obviously gets a scent of vagina and starts flirting with the lieutenant, obviously the same one that the chameleon is after. She offers the kids a ride in her jeep, which they accept, and Mitchell seems to be going along with it too. That's just great guardianship from Mitchell there. Take five students to a foreign country and jump in the jeep of the first person you meet. If only more teachers were like that, field trips would be a hell of a lot more fun. It's kind of weird that Junior is so blatantly coming on to this woman. I mean, sure, he's a Bond, but it's a whole age thing. Isn't he supposed to be, like, 16 or something? I don't know how old this Lieutenant Shelley woman is, but I would assume she's mid-late 20s, early 30s. Not that anything illegal is going on, but it's just kind of weird. He's a schoolboy. Anyway, Lieutenant Shelley obviously doesn't have anything better to do as she decides to give the kids a tour around the city. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't she supposed to be the one to go to the Pentagon to tell the General that someone is planning to steal that... Oh, 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 yes, never mind. It's far more important to give these kids a tour around the city, isn't it? Uh, Junior and Shelley arrive at the top of the, the Washington Monument and have a little flirt before our chameleon villain shows up and... Ah! Shelley! Ah! I like how the villain's plan is to basically just push them out of the window. Like, how simple is that? The chameleon flees while the rest of the kids head up and rescue Shelley. Bond Jr. falls off the monument with Trevor, who still luckily has his long underwear parachute, and Jr. uses a device to fly after the chameleon's van. Where the hell is Mitchell? He must be the worst field trip guardian ever! Trevor branches off while Bond hangs to the top of the unknowing chameleon's van. Back at the monument, the gang track Bond's whereabouts using IQ's headphones that are linked to Bond's cassette player. Cassette? Oh yes, wait, I remember cassettes. They, they were like physical MP3s, right? So, how do you like the view, James? IQ? Aw, oh, shucks, who'd have thought you leave five students alone in a foreign country and they disappear? <sighs> Bond follows the villains to a hotel. It's here that Junior overhears the chameleon plans to steal a new army cyborg prototype thing called Rats from the Pentagon by impersonating a US general. Junior meets a gay steward and steals his uniform and then... Food! Lots of good spicy East Indian food! Goes undercover as a Caucasian Indian? Well, if Uncle James can dress as a gorilla and a clown, I guess this is no more silly than that. It's that kid I pushed out the window! What, you mean you recognise him? But that disguise was just so convincing! A fight breaks out and the chameleon flees with Junior giving chase, his clothes magically changing as he turns a corner. The gang show up, but the chameleon manages to escape after impersonating Trevor. Junior and Shelley head to the Pentagon to warn everybody, but they're too late as shit kicks off. General, I have reason to believe someone may try to steal the rat's prototype. You're absolutely right, Lieutenant. Yeah, because a uh, lead pipe's gonna do a lot of good against that. Junior commandeers a tank. How many years is this before Goldeneye again? Anyway, Bond Junior sets off the sprinklers, which apparently short circuits the chameleon's face implant thingies, which is kinda stupid. I mean, considering how much moisture there is in the human body, does that mean every time he gets a snotty cold, that thing goes to shit? With the day saved, Shelley offers the gang a VIP tour of the city when the worst guardian in the world reappears. Something tells me I don't want to know what you've been up to, James. Don't act all responsible now, Mitchell. If anything, the kids should be asking you where you've been. Who, me? I've just been checking out the many faces of Washington, D.C. <laughs> He's leaving them again? Does that man not learn? One of the students under his care was arrested and another was pushed out of a window and blew up part of the Pentagon with a tank. How the hell is he expecting to keep his job after all this? So, that's episode three, and you know what? I don't think it's that bad. I'll probably never ever watch it again as long as I live, but it wasn't a bad way to pass 22 minutes. This episode is a remarkable improvement over the previous two, in my opinion. The story is, of course, basic, but it's not preschool basic. It's just kind of appropriate, I guess. And 
to be honest, it does feel kind of like a mini bomb story, which is nice. You, you know, in the sense that we have, uh, we open with something being stolen, there's an assassination attempt, Bond gets involved before plan is revealed later, and there's an action-packed finale. It's much better than the steel bombs Aston Martin from episode one, and less Indiana Jonesy than the story from uh, episode two. It's just all appropriate here. Now let's talk about our new villain, shall we? To be honest, I quite like that they're creating their own villains. I mean, as novel and interesting as it is to see main series villains in this show, it is kind of sacrilegious at times. I'm really dreading that Doctor No episode that's coming up, by the way. Though the chameleon is more a work of science fiction and would probably be better placed in an X-Men cartoon, I think he's a pretty cool, creepy villain nonetheless, and hey, this is a cartoon, if they want to go big and stupid, then whatever, it's fine by me. The kids are still pretty shit, of course, Phoebe doesn't even do anything in this episode, it was a complete waste of ink having her there, but I, you know what, I am getting used to them, I guess, so they're tolerable, but I largely think my enjoyment of each episode is going to come down to how much I like the villain and the plot, because... The kids are going to be doing the same shtick every episode, right? So if you see one of them, you see them all, as far as they're concerned. Something that I do find interesting about this episode, though, is how... Well, you know the show tries to incorporate all the Bond elements, right? So we have the gadgets, action, puns, etc. But it seems like it's confused as to how to incorporate the girls element, and understandably so. I mean, the target audience for this show is young boys, and young boys don't want to see a load of romance, they want to see cool action and shit, but it's interesting how they pair up Junior with the Shelly girl in this episode, and he so blatantly flirts with her, but it's kind of weird because he's a child and she's a woman, it's just uncomfortable, and how they tried to incorporate that girl thing in the last episode as well was kind of weird, but like how they didn't try to do a romance thing there, but then... Bond's going to study with Tracy, isn't he? Or is he? Uh, I don't know, whatever. What is their relationship exactly? It's something I look forward to seeing develop in coming episodes. Uh, that is how the show deals with the romance girls sex element, if you will. And yes, because I strive to be a Bond completist, I'll be looking at every single godforsaken episode in this series, or at least every episode I can find online, so be sure, Bond fans, even if it takes every last strand of my sanity, I will be reviewing all the episodes of this series, and possibly throwing a gigantic party once it's all over. Until next time, Bond fans.